and welcome to the first in a series of companion videos to my new Clark's Latin course. I want to begin by examining the verb, the beating heart of any sentence. And perhaps the most logical place to start is with a list of Latin verbs and their English meanings. Now, although these Latin words will probably be unfamiliar, you will notice that there are a number of English words that look strikingly similar to them. This is one of the most fascinating elements of studying the Latin language. There are thousands of words in English which we have borrowed from Latin. These words are called derivations. In fact, the word derivation is itself a derivation. It comes from the Latin meaning, I draw a fluid down from something, like taking water from a well. So when we examine this vocabulary list, we can see a whole array of English words that we've acquired from these Latin ones. Ambulo, think ambulance, or amble, or uh, a pram, like perambulator, it's short for a machine that helps walk a baby. Amo, I love, like amiable, or ami in French, amigo in Spanish, words meaning friend. Apropinquo is quite obvious because Five letters are the same at the beginning of each word. Also within apropinquo is the Latin word propi, meaning near or close. And that gives us words like propinquity, meaning nearness or closeness. Canto, I sing, think chant, chante in French, or descant, like the descant of a Christmas carol, the high part of the last verse, or a descant recorder, a particularly squeaky kind of instrument. Clamour, I shout, think, clamour, exclaim, exclamation mark. Arrow, I wander, an error, to wander off from the right path, or erratic. Labaro, navigo, both quite obvious. Labaro gives us laboratory, labour, laborious. And navigo, words like navigator or navigate. Pugno, I fight, think, pug dog, or the word pugnacious, which means you're spoiling for a rumble, always looking for a fight. Finally, specto, I watch, naturally gives us spectacles, or spectate, spectator. Now, when we examine the Latin words and the English words side by side, we can see a pretty obvious pattern. In English, the vast majority of verbs consist of two or more words. I sing, we are fighting, they will attack, she has defeated, etc. The first of those words is referred to as a pronoun. A pronoun is a word that stands in place of another noun, like they, or I, or you, or he, or whatever. The remaining words, meanwhile, tell us what it is that's going on, as well as when that's taking place. Now have a look at the Latin words. The vast majority of Latin verbs consist solely of one word but we can split that word up into two parts. Consider here amo, meaning I love. We can split that up into am and o. The am part, the first part of the Latin verb, is called the stem. And that's the bit that tells us the meaning, what it is that's going on. The fact that it's am o means that the action is loving, as opposed to fighting or sailing or whatever. The second part, which goes on the end of the stem, is, unsurprisingly, referred to as the ending, technically a termination. And it's the ending that tells us who is carrying out the action of the verb. In this case, it's am o, so I am the one performing the action. Now we're dealing here with the present tense. That's verbs that are taking place now, at this point in time. The present tense has a total of six endings as follows. We've seen that the first one is O. The remaining endings are S, T, MUS, TIS, and UNT. O, S, T, MUS, TIS, UNT. Repeat that with me, please. O, S, T, MUS, TIS, UNT. O, S, T, MUS, TIS, UNT. And once without me? Good. The sooner you can know those six endings off by heart like that, the sooner you're going to be able to fluently translate Latin verbs. Now, those six endings correspond with six sets of pronouns in English. 
We've seen that the first one, O, means I. The remaining pronouns are you, he, or she, or it, we, you, and they. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Repeat it with me, please. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Again, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Once without me. Excellent. Now, even though we've got a variety of other bits of information we need to fill in in this table, and we'll come on to that in a minute, just with those two sets of forms, we can already translate some Latin verbs into English, and very easily too. Look at this first one here, navigamus. Start by looking at the ending, and count down in the table until you find it. O-S-T-mus, the fourth one down. Now apply the same logic to the set of pronouns, I, you, he, she, it, we. So we know that we are the ones carrying out the action. And when we look back to this vocabulary list here, navigo means sail, so navigamus means we sail. Or we could say we are sailing, and either of those would be the correct answer. Now something you might have noticed in these five examples here is that between the endings, and what looks like the stem is the letter A. The letter A has snuck in here. And that's because, actually, the majority of verb stems do end in an A, like so. It's actually a mo, a mass, a mat, a marmus, a martis, and a mat. There should really be an A here. And the only reason that Latin doesn't bother with it is because you would then get an, a ma-o sound, which is a bit too much like a sort of cockney fruit seller, you know, tomatoes, bunch of grapes, all right, my darling. Latin likes to avoid sounds like those, so the a psh, disappears. But the rest of the time, it does exist here. Now, we've got two other columns that we need to fill in. The first one, number, and that refers to singular and plural. The first three endings are singular. That means that only one person is carrying out the action. I, you, by yourself, and then he or she or it. The second set of endings, however, are plural. That means that more than one person is carrying them out. We, collectively, or you, a group of people, or they, a group of people over there. The person column, meanwhile, gives us the perspective of the verb. The first person is about oneself, so that's I in the singular, and then we in the plural, me along with somebody else. The second person is for addressing, you, singular, or you, plural, which explains, incidentally, why we have two copies of the word you here, something you might have noticed and wondered about. And finally, the third person is demonstrative. It's for pointing at things. So it could be he, she, or it, or if there's a group of people, they. So there we have it. The stems, the endings, which correspond with that set of pronouns, the persons, and the numbers. Now we can translate these four remaining verbs. Laborat, O-S-T, that's I, you, he, she, it. So we can pick whichever those we want. Note that it doesn't often make sense, but between he and she, we can pick either. So let's go with she in this example. And then look at the stem. Labro means work. So she works. Spectant, O-S-T, mus, tis, unt. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Specto means watch, so they watch. Now pause this video for a moment and see if you can work out the last two yourselves. Ambulas, that's you, walk, and we tend to specify in brackets that it's you singular as opposed to you plural. You singular, walk, and finally canto, Simple, just as it is in the vocabulary list. I sing. 